answer a question to our mailbag. Do we have one this week? Yeah, um, someone wrote in uh, asking uh, what our um, what our opinion is on um, uh, the legacy of Mao and Maoism. Okay, well, that's a big question, and um, well, we could, one way we could approach it is you know we uh, we also get questions a lot of the time about about Stalin. Mm. Right? Um, so. Uh, I notice you guys talk about Marx and Lenin, but you don't talk about Stalin and Mao. You don't quote them in your in your writings. Um, why why is that? Well, it's a good thing we don't because we've always felt that we have to develop a model and concept of socialism in the United States based on what happens here, you know, and not what happens in uh, some other country. Um, that's one part of it, and what 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 happened in the communist movement uh, is that, particularly in the initial stages in the 20th century, is that because of our newness and lack of experience, we mechanically borrowed from the Soviet or Chinese experience and tried to apply it to American conditions or French conditions or Japanese or Argentinian or um, you know, Brazilian, uh, Indonesian experiences. And it just don't work, you know? There's no universal models. You gotta develop it based on what happens in your own country. That's one thing. The other thing that you gotta address is what were the political practices of both Joe Stalin in the Soviet Union uh, during the uh, period of uh, uh, his life when he was the leader of the country. And the same thing is true with uh, Mao. And in both cases, you know, you have uh, a lot of problematic issues that came to the fore. Yeah, they played a war role in winning the Second World War, you know. Um, yeah. Mao led the revolution uh, and the, the long march, uh, helped organize the Ch Chinese people and party and the peasantry in the fight uh, uh, for the national independence of their country. No question about that. But there were also uh, a lot of problems, you know? There were the trials. Uh, there was the liquidation of the old Bolsheviks in the Central Committee. Uh, there was in China the Great Leap Forward. Uh, you know, there was the Cultural Revolution, which created enormous, made enormous mistakes, you know, uh, and caused uh, significant suffering. But then there's also the issue of the political practice in, in uh, 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 both cases, you know. What re relevance do the uh, political experiences there? Uh, have to do with our uh, experience here. Like you can't take uh, power comes out of the barrel of a gun, Mao's famous quote from the Little Red Book and apply it to our political struggle in the United States. Gonna... Sadly, particularly during the 60s and 70s, a lot of young people did, you know? I'm gonna or you try can... and take this in a, in a slightly different direction, I think, uh, as a, sorry, I, I didn't mean to cut you off. Uh, did you develop understand? your thought. Uh, so um, I think this question of, of, of quoting Stalin and Mao in particular, I don't do it because it seems like letting the bourgeoisie dictate the terms of our ideological work. So I think there's, there's this tendency in, in, in anti-communism to reduce the entire Soviet experience to Stalin. Everything is just this, this Stalin and how horrible he was and, and to do the same thing in China with Mao. Mao and, and how horrible Mao was. And, and that becomes uh, a kind of cover. So, you, so they don't have to actually engage with the, the complexities of the, the process of socialist development, the, the pressure of, of imperialism and capitalism and all of that. So I think on the part of a lot of uh, people in the, the communist movement, or some people in the communist movement, the desire to quote Stalin and Mao 
has less to do actually with what Stalin and Mao wrote than with a desire to sort of push back against that uh, ruling class anti-communism to say, you know, you, you say that Stalin and Mao prove that, that communism is dangerous and tyrannical, but we're going to, you know, take that up and be proud of it. But that's, that's not the, that's not the question. The question isn't, do we, you know, wave the, the proclaim the name of comrade Stalin or, or, or whatever. The, the question is, what are we doing as the working class? What are we doing for the working class? And, and I don't think we should fall into the, the trap of mistaking a, a person's name for a program. Um, our program yeah, comes You from, have to look at the universal experience of the working class socialist and communist movement. And we have to draw the lessons from its pluses and minuses in an objective and frank way. And we have to develop our own way, our own path based on what's happening in our country. I think that's the most important uh, thing. And we got some hell of five thinkers uh, in the United States as well, you know, going all the way back to Debs and uh, Foster and, and uh, Elizabeth Gurley Flynn, Claudia Jones, uh, W.E.B. Du Bois, I could go on and on and on. Uh, Helen Keller even, you know, Albert Einstein, all partisans of socialism. Let's quote them. So, Scott, stay uh, strong, stay safe, stay healthy, uh, stay socially distant, but uh, communally and socially close until next week. Our and national speak, committee speak is those, meeting uh, on Sunday. Speaking uh, of, of those national traditions and, and staying healthy, um, I saw a suggestion from a friend on Facebook. You know, Yiddish is, uh, our party has a very, historically a very close relationship with um, American uh, Jews and um, Yiddish was one of the big languages of our party in its early days. And uh, I saw a friend of mine on Facebook proposed that in this time of, of crisis and, and pandemic, um, maybe we should adopt the, uh, the traditional Yiddish um, way of saying goodbye, which is sei gesund, be healthy. Be healthy. That's the last word. Um, have a great week and uh, be healthy. Be healthy, comrades. <laughs>